today's question is what is a number? And so let's think about this question because a lot of people think uh, that they know the answer to this question. Um, and at first, you know, I would assume that I, I did too because if you ask me what is a number, I'd probably say, uh, well, uh, two uh, is a number or three is a number or you could even do four uh, is a number. So you could, you know, translate uh, this question, this asking another question saying, uh, is two a number? Or is three a number? Or is four a, a number? And at first I think, yes, two is a number. I've been writing uh, two uh, to represent the number two for as long as I uh, can remember almost. Um, and if you actually translate this into another question, it starts to, you start to actually question the fact if you can actually answer uh, this question. So how about this? Is the word uh, love an emotion? And when you start really listening to and paying attention to this question, you realize that this word love, right, this is not an emotion. It's simply a word that represents uh, the emotion that we call love. In, a, in another language, it would be worded uh, something uh, some other way. Uh, like in French, I think it's uh, amour. Um, but it, in any other language, it'll be worded some other way, but it still represents a similar emotion that we all experience that we call in English uh, love. So when you start thinking about it in terms like that, you start to realize that, no, th this symbol that we use here, this is not really the number two. It's simply the symbol we use to represent the number two. And there are in other uh, civilizations, uh, they use other uh, symbols. And so we're going to study some of these. So we're going to take a look at the um, Babylonian numeral system, which they represented two by these sort of two vertical staffs. We'll look at the Egyptian, which they also use sort of vertical staffs uh, to represent the number two. We'll even look at the uh, Roman numeral system, which you're probably quite familiar with. And so that's what they use to represent the number two. And then the uh, Greek numeral system, they used the, their alphabet, so they used the letter beta to represent the number uh, two. And so we're going to look at some different numeral systems an attempt to try to understand this idea or this question a little bit better. What is a number really? And now, this the answer to this question is not an easy one, and we're going to discuss it a bit uh, when we read a, a chapter out of Bertrand Russell's book, uh, Introduction to Mathematical Philosophy. Uh, and the answer to this question uh, uh, did not come until about the late uh, 1800s. And so it's a very difficult uh, question uh, to answer it has a very sort of deep uh, answer, but we're going to start with just basic numeral systems. And so let's let's go down here and let's talk about what we're going to uh, do today. So we're going to talk about some old numeral systems, and where we're going to start is just what a numeral system is uh, in general. And after we talk about this. We're going to come down here and we'll talk about some old numeral systems. Now, I chose the Egyptian numeral system, the Babylonian numeral system, the Greek numeral system, and the Roman numeral system because I think they're probably the most popular. If you ever read a, a book on the history of mathematics, they'll probably concentrate uh, somewhere around, you know, at least these top three. Uh, typically, a, a book on the history of mathematics talks a, a little bit about Egyptian mathematics and Babylonian mathematics and certainly Greek mathematics. Not so much the Roman, but the Roman you're already familiar with because we learned this in uh, grade school. But I thought these are the more sort of popular numeral systems. Of course, the Chinese had a, a numeral system, a wonderful numeral system, and so did the Mayan uh, civilization. Uh, and But we're not going to concentrate on those, although you can research them if you like on the Internet. There's lots and lots of information on them. So let's start here with what is a numeral system. And a numeral system is composed of two pieces. It basically has a bunch of numerals and some rules. The numerals are simply some, some basic set of symbols that represent some numbers. And then the rules are a way of using these symbols to represent other numbers. So let me, let me do an example real fast because it becomes real obvious sort of what I mean here by these, these statements. So let's take a look at this example and just answer the questions uh, below. So what numerals do we use? And if you think about this, you can just start counting, and we start with zero here. So we have zero, 
one, two, three, four. And these are all different symbols that represent different numbers. Six, seven, eight, nine. And then we're going to stop at nine because when you hit ten, ten is not a new is not a new symbol. It's actually composed of two old symbols, the symbol one and the symbol zero. So we have ten numerals, zero through nine, and that's it. And with those ten numerals, we can combine them by using certain rules uh, to represent any number we like. All right, so if we want to represent you know, 123 things, we write a 1, a 2, and a 3. And we give meaning to the places. So the 3 is in the 1's place, the 2 is in the 10's place, and the 1 is in the 10 squared or 100's place. So what we have, what sort of rules do we use to represent other numbers? We have what's called a base 10 positional system. And there's a couple questions you should ask yourself. You know, what mathematics is all about? It's not really about uh, the numbers in s some sense. I mean, when you think of numbers, you think of numerals. It's not really about the numerals. It's sort of about, you know, what is a, this question, what is a number? What is a deeper sort of meaning behind this concept of number? Uh, a poet or a writer might be interested in trying to explore what is the real uh, meaning of love. You know, not just the word love itself, but what is love? Uh, can we describe it somehow? Can we capture its essence? A mathematician is interested in trying to ca capture the essence of what a, a number really is. And so, you know, a mathematician might be interested in this idea of not so much that we use base 10, but why base 10? Why do we choose uh, base 10? And then, you know, the answer becomes rather obvious when you think about it. So why base 10? So, you know, look down at your hands and try to figure it out. And if you look at your hands, you're going to see 10 different what? 10 different fingers, right? 10 digits. Right? So here we use base 10 because we have actually 10 fingers. And if you look at other civilizations and the bases they chose to count in, you'll say sometimes they chose base 10, sometimes they chose base 5, because again, you know, I mean, you can count in fives, so you do have five fingers. Uh, sometimes they chose base uh, 20, because you have 10 fingers and you have 10 uh, toes. And then it's a positional system because the position of the numerals matters. If you write 1, 2, 3, that's certainly different than if you write 3, 2, 1. The position of these numerals uh, actually matters, so it has meaning. All right, so that's the idea of it behind a numeral system. It has two components. It has a basic set of, nu of symbols that represent some numbers, right? And it has a bunch of uh, rules, a way of using these numerals to represent other numbers. And try to, to think about it in terms of our numeral system. And so now I want to talk about these different uh, numeral systems, the Egyptian numeral system, the Babylonian, the Greek, uh, and the Roman. And we're not going to go in exactly order. It actually turns out the hardest numeral system here to do is the Babylonian numeral system. And the reason it's the hardest is because they express their numbers in base 60. And you think, oh my goodness, you know, why base 60? And this is sort of a mystery uh, in history. Uh, we don't really know why uh, base 60, uh, but we still have remnants of this numeral system around, uh, especially if you look at the clock, because if you think about the clock, it's actually written in some sense in base 60, because in an hour, there's how many minutes? And you say, hopefully 60. And in a minute, how many seconds? You say 60. And you can ask yourself the question, why 60? Right? Wouldn't it be nicer if it was sort of like 100? 100 seconds in a, in a minute and 100 minutes in, in an hour? This would actually be very nice, especially when you watch the microwave go from 1 to 59, which just constantly drives me uh, crazy. But let's take a look at these different numeral systems and try to uh, represent or try to translate basically uh, these numerals and their system into uh, our numeral system to figure out what number is being uh, represented here. So this is actually quite easy. And you always will be given this table on the right. So here's the table for the Egyptian numeral system on the right over here. And if you look at it, it's kind of interesting to notice that they represent the numeral system with pictures. Right? So they have here a vertical staff for 1, a heel bone for 10, a scroll for 100, a lotus flower for 1,000, a finger, a pointing finger for 10,000, a tadpole for 100,000, and the astonished man for a million. 
Now, some of these symbols really make a lot of sense. Like if you think about the tadpole, well, there's a lot of, you look at a pool of water, you see a lot of tadpoles. So 100,000 is a lot. Uh, same with a uh, lotus flower, I think. If you look at a field of flowers, you see a lot, so it represents a thousand. Uh, vertical staff is pretty obvious why it would be one. A heel bone, I haven't seen a very good explanation why a heel bone would represent ten. Uh, a scroll, uh, you know, maybe it was a standard sort of unit of length, and so they let it be a hundred. Uh, pointing finger, right? That one got, I'm not really quite sure why they would use a, a pointing finger, you know. Uh, astonished man, all right, this one. Uh, there's some debate on whether it's an astonished man or prisoners bowing before uh, the pharaoh. Uh, but you can kind of see like a million, it's an astonished man. He has his hands up in the air like, ah, that's a really big number. Uh, or, you know, some people uh, will tell you that this, these are actually prisoners, a million prisoners bowing before uh, the pharaoh. Or slaves, I should say, not prisoners. You know, a million uh, slaves bowing before uh, the pharaoh. But I, what's really interesting is the fact that they use pictures to represent uh, numbers, which makes sense. You know, if I if I was going to make up a numeral system and I didn't know much about numeral systems, certainly I would try to represent them with actual uh, pictures that have real meaning, like uh, perhaps a leaf uh, on a tree would represent, you know, 10,000 things because there are lots of leaves on a, a, a tree. So this is sort of an interesting idea or interesting way of representing uh, numbers. And it's real easy to use. All you need to do is, you know, take the... Uh, symbol here, which is a tadpole, and realize that's 100,000 things. So under here, let's say, you know, this is 100,000 things. We're trying to figure out uh, what number is being represented here. And then this is supposed to be a pointing finger, and a pointing finger is 10,000 things. So here's 10,000. Then we have two lotus flowers. So each lotus flower is 1,000, so that's 2,000 things. And then here's a scroll, and so that's 100 things. And then you have two heel bones, 10 each, so that's 20 things and a vertical staff, which is one. And so all you need to do, and you can guess, what are you going to do to all these numbers to figure out your answer? You're simply going to add them all up. The simplest possible thing you could do. And so this is going to be equal to, let's see, we're going to have 112,121. So 112,000. 121. Let's check that. I have one things, 20 things, 100 things, 2,000 things, 10,000 things, and 100,000 things. So this is my answer, 112,121 things. So this bunch of symbols is representing this number of things. And, and again, it's sort of interesting. You can research this if you want. Go online and try to you know, find out exactly why they chose these different symbols. And it's sort of lost to history. I don't think we have any sort of record of why they exactly decided to choose a tadpole for 100,000 or a pointing finger uh, for 10,000. Uh, there, I'm sure there is some debate whether this is actually a pointing finger or if it's something else, or if this is actually a heel bone or if it's something uh, something else. Just like down here, I know there's a debate whether this is the, uh, an astonished man or this is a uh, prisoner's or slaves bowing before a, a pharaoh. Let's do one more, and I want to do this one <coughs> down here so you can see a certain property of this uh, numeral system. So again, you simply look at a symbol and write down uh, the number it represents, number of things it represents. And so on here, you have a scroll, which is a hundred things, a heel bone, which is five things, a uh, vertical staff, which is one. You have a lotus flower, which is a thousand, a pointing finger, which is ten thousand, another lotus flower, which is a thousand. And here's this tadpole over here; it's a hundred thousand. And then you have a heel bone, which is another five. And to figure out the numeral, hopefully you're seeing a pattern here, you simply just add these all up. And when you add these all up, hopefully you notice it's going to be exactly the same as the above. Because these symbols are exactly the same as these symbols, they're just mixed up. So you should get back 112,121 things when you add them all up. And what's nice about this, what you want to notice about this, is that this is called a grouping system. So this is a grouping system. It's not a position, positional system. Right, it's called a grouping system because no matter how you group the numerals together, you get the same answer. And it, but it's not a positional system. Okay. 
Okay, so it's not a positional system. And that's because if you change the position, you don't change the number. So it can't be a positional system. It's called a grouping system. And it's the only uh, numeral system of this type we're going to look at. And so it's kind of neat like that. It doesn't matter how you write them. And if you look at how the Egyptians uh, wrote, sometimes they wrote horizontally, but a lot of times they wrote, you know, sort of vertically. And so, or they sometimes they would write sort of in a combination. They just kind of put the numerals uh, together. You know, they might draw a lotus flower uh, here and then a heel bone and then three vertical staffs right below it. And so that would represent, what, a thousand uh, and uh, ten. Oops, that's supposed to be ten things. I'm sorry. When I drew this heel bone, I put five there for some reason. That's supposed to be ten. All right, so there's a thousand uh, and thirteen things right here. So it does not matter the order in which they are, uh, these symbols are written. And so that's kind of interesting about the Egyptian numeral system. All right, let's take a look at the Greek numeral system. It's also very interesting because instead of creating new numerals, what they did is they just used their alphabet. Right? So they have alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, and so on. And alpha represents one, beta represents two, gamma represents three, and delta represents four things, uh, and so on. And then over here, you have iota, kappa, lambda, and the rest. These represent 10, 20, 30 things. And then the next column over here, rho, sigma, tau, represents 100, 200, 300, and so on uh, things. And this actually makes a, a lot of sense. Like if you're going to make a numeral system and you're going to sort of create it and you're thinking about how you want to create this and you already have an alphabet in place, it would make sense to use your alphabet because everybody already knows the symbols. So all you have to do is then correlate the symbols with the actual number of things it's supposed to uh, represent. And so this is quite similar to the uh, Egyptian numeral system in the sense that you just write the number underneath. So if you look for the symbol, this is gamma. So over here you have this gamma, and that's three things. So I'll write a three underneath it. And then this I is actually iota, which is ten things. And then the sigma, well, it's probably the next column. Oh, that's 200 things. So over here we have sigma, which is 200 things. And then you ask the, que you ask the question, you know, what do you think you do next? And you simply add them up. And so this is going to be equal to 213 things. Down here, you can do the same thing. So let's, let's go through the same process again. So I look for this symbol, which is the symbol for theta, and that's nine things. This looky, looks like almost like a zero, but it's not a zero. It's actually a, a, an omicron here. That's 70 things. So you have 70 things here. And then you can go to the next column. And you have this phi here, and then phi is 500 things. And now you have sort of a, a strange situation. You write an alpha, and you look at alpha, and you say that's 1. Well, look at the pattern. Do you really think that's going to be a 1? It goes 9, 70, 500. And the logic would tell us that this is probably not a 1, but a 1,000. And they put a little comma here before that. We do a similar thing, but we usually don't put the comma before we put it after. So we'd write 1,579. They put the comma uh, before. And so this is equal to 1,579 things. It's interesting to ask yourself, you know, why we use commas? And just like in the English language, a lot of times we use commas to pause. And that's why we use commas in mathematics here when we write numbers. Like if I write uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, comma, five, six, seven. This is one million two hundred thirty-four thousand five hundred sixty-seven. So think about this, because these are actually there to sort of help help you read this number to pause, basically. You know, so one pause million, two hundred thirty-four pause thousand, five hundred sixty-seven. So it's kind of interesting how we use commas in our, our numeral system to read uh, numbers. And so that's how the uh, Greeks uh, expressed numbers. Now, once you get higher than uh, 9,999, they did something that was rather strange and complicated. They used what's called the, a symbol for 10,000 called the myriad. Uh, we still use that in our language today to mean you know many, many, many things. Uh, we're not going to get into that because it gets a little bit uh, complicated. All I want you guys to understand is that they use their alphabet to represent uh, numbers. And then the sort of most obvious way you would use this table uh, to figure out that this sigma iota gamma is 213 things.
All right, let's look at the next numeral system, and this one's the most familiar. All students like this. So on the right here, again, we have the table, and you know some of these numerals, I'm sure, already, because I remember learning them in uh, grade school. And so this I is 1, V is 5, X is 10, L is 50, C is 100, D is 500, and M is 1,000. Now the question we would like to ask ourselves is why they chose these letters to represent these number of things. And if you actually do a little research, what you'll realize is that here, and look at the most obvious ones that sort of help you figure out why they chose these letters, is C is supposed to be 100. And M is supposed to be a thousand. And if you think in our language, do we have a word that means a hundred? And do we have a word that means a thousand that starts with M or a hundred that starts with C? And hopefully you're, you start thinking, you start thinking, yeah, century means a hundred years, uh, a millennium means a thousand years. And that's exactly what the Romans did. They just took the first letter of the word that meant 100, and they called that 100 things. So C is 100 things. And for 1,000, millennium, M is 1,000 things. All right, so they are very uh, sort of practical, which uh, historically, you would see Romans were very sort of a very practical uh, sort of civilization. All right, so let's do these. So here we have, you know, it doesn't matter which way you start. Oh, let's start over here on the left. And here you have to be a little bit careful. So you have C, which is 100. So you have 100 things here. Now let's do it. Erase that. So C stands for 100. L stands for 50. X stands for 10. V stands for, of course, five, and then three sort of vertical staffs or three I's, however you want to think of it, stands for three things. And then, again, what do you do with these uh, numbers here? You simply add them together. And so this is equal to 100 plus 50 plus 60 plus 5 plus 3 should be 100 and, what, uh, 68? Let's check this, right? So I have 150, 160, 5, 168. So you have 168 things. Let's do it below here. And notice I'm using the same symbols, but I put, wrote them in a, a different order. And so the idea is this is going to change the number, and it turns out that it will. This is a positional system. I don't even say a positional numeral system. Let's just, we'll just call it a positional, positional system. And here, this represents uh, still 100 things, but right here, this XL. It no longer is 10 plus 50. When you write the X, which is smaller than the L, this actually represents 40 things. You subtract. So you have 10 and you have 50, you subtract, so you get 40. This is still 5, and of course these are still 3. And then you add them together, and you get 148 things. So let's fix this. So 100 and 48 things. So again, this is a positional system. It's not a grouping system uh, because the position matters. If you change the grouping of the symbols, you get a different uh, number. And that reminds me, if you go up here back to the Greek numeral system, so let's think about this. Is it positional or a grouping system? So here in the Greek numeral system, is it going to be positional or a, group, uh, or a grouping system? And hopefully you say that it's not grouping because the order will certainly matter. If you put, uh, let's say, oh, you can kind of look here. If you put, let's do um, alpha and, uh, well, let's just do alpha. If I put alpha and, oh, let's put alpha and let's put, beta here. Now alpha and a beta, right, what would this imply? Well beta obviously is 2 and they probably would put a comma right here and so this is 2 whereas alpha is no longer 1 it's going to be a thousand so this represents a thousand and 2 whereas if you put a comma and then let's rearrange the numerals here and you put a beta alpha this is no longer a thousand and 2 now Alpha is 1, and beta is going to be not 1,000, but 2,000. So this is going to be 2,000 and 1. So the positions uh, of the numerals actually matters. So it's a positional 
uh, system. Right, the only grouping system that we're gonna that we're looking at is the, actually the Egyptian uh, numeral system. Okay, so the Roman numeral system is rather easy when you get the hang of it. You just have to watch out for this stuff like LX here. That's actually 60, whereas XL is uh, 40. And I mean, you've seen this before, right? I mean, you can write VI, which is 6, or IV, which is 4. So you've seen this uh, before. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the last numeral system. And those Babylon, it's called the Babylonian numeral system. And I always think of those crazy Babylonians because uh, they have a lot of symbols here. Uh, to represent 60 things in some sense. Uh, so you have 1 through 59 because they had a base 60 uh, numeral system. So it's sort of interesting. And again, nobody really knows why they chose, they wound up using a uh, base 60 numeral system. And it is a positional uh, numeral system, and we'll, we'll see that. So you can write base 60 if you want. We can insert the word positional uh, numeral, numeral system. Uh, there are some theories as to why they chose uh, base 60. Some people believe because uh, if you want to work with fractions, it's nice to work in a base where a lot of numbers go into uh, the actual base of the numeral system. And if you think about it, uh, a lot of numbers go into 60, you know, 2, uh, 3, uh, 5. They all go into 60. So it turns out representing fractions, which, you know, fractions are, are hard even to this day for us to sort of work with and it was even harder for the Egyptians and the Babylonians because their numeral system wasn't uh, quite as sophisticated as, as ours is uh, so it's just as hard for them uh, maybe even uh, harder really okay so let's uh, let's try to determine what numbers being represented here and this is not too hard the first one's pretty easy you just go over here and you look for the symbol and uh, you look for this sort of triangular wedge and this vertical staff and you see you get 11 and so once you sort of look, start looking at this Babylonian numeral system, which again, this table will always be given to you, right? The idea is not to memorize uh, the actual symbols being used, but to be able to use this table to figure out what numbers being represented uh, over here. You'll realize that they only really have two symbols. They have a vertical staff, and then they have this sort of triangular wedge. And the reason for this is that when the Babylonians uh, the way that they were actually riding is they used a, a sort of stylus, and the stylus sort of had a tip and, and an edge. And what they would do is they'd sort of push that tip into a clay tablet and would make this sort of vertical staff. And to make this triangular wedge, it kind of used a side. So it was called, they wrote in a way it was called the cuneiform. And uh, the cunea, I believe, was the actual name of the stylus uh, that they used. And so they used this Kenya, just would push it into this uh, a clay tablet to make the symbols. You can almost sort of see how and they recorded basically data, right? They have a sort of a large population, and they're re recording uh, sort of how much uh, food they have. Uh, and they were, so they would actually sort of, you know, type into these clay tablets. You can kind of see them kind of typing push, 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 you know, edge, you know, edge, you know, push, 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 edge push, edge, you know, almost like a typewriter uh, would do, or when you're typing on a, a keyboard. All right, let's do the next one. Now, the next one, first, figuring out what each set of symbols represents isn't too bad. So a vertical staff, of course, is just one. Uh, two sort of wedges in a vertical staff, you come over here and you say, oh, I got that one, that's 21. And then uh, two sort of vertical staffs, that's easy, right? two vertical staffs right there, that's two. And now you're tempted to add these all up like you were doing in the other problems. So you take 2 plus 21 plus 1, and you say that's 24. And you say, great, I'm done. No. Right? If it wanted to represent 24 things, they would have simply used these symbols here. Right? So it's a little bit harder because the idea is that these positions hold different place values. So this is the ones place. And now this, in our numeral system, we call this place the tens place. But they'll call it the... 60s. So Babylonians call that the 60s place. And this is actually the 60s then squared place, which is equal to 3,600. And so when you write a 2 in this place, it does not mean two things. It actually means two 300, 3,600s. And this 21 means 21 60s. And this 1 means 1 1. And so this is actually equal to 2 times. 3,600 plus 2160s, so 21 times 60, and then plus 1 times 1. 
And so that's equal to, and we'll use our calculator on this because I don't want to do this by hand. If I can avoid it, I will. So I'll take out my calculator. So if you have your calculator, take it out and work with me. And what I want to do on my calculator is I want to take 2 times 3,600. And then I want to add 21 times 60 plus 1 times 1. And you really don't need to write the times 1, but that's you can if you want. And you're going to get out 8,461. So this is going to be equal to then 8,461 things. So this bunch of symbols represents 8,461 things. And you have to so you have to be a little bit careful. Let's let's do another one on this because I think it's sort of worthwhile. Let's just make one up. So let's do a sort of a triangular wedge, vertical staff. Let's do some vertical staffs here. Let's do three vertical staffs. And then let's do another triangular wedge. And then over here, let's do one vertical staff. And so the idea, you say, okay, well, this represents one thing. A triangular wedge represents 10 things. And three vertical staffs represents three things. You can look over here. And then a triangular wedge and a vertical staff, that's 11 things. Now, I can't just simply add these all up. What I have to first understand is that this is the ones spot, the ones place. This, instead of the tens place, those Babylonians used the sixties place. This is the sixties squared place. And then this would be the sixties, what do you think? If that's squared, this is probably cubed. And so what this equals is 11 60 cubes. So I have 11 times 60 cubed plus I have 360 squareds plus I have 1060s, 1060s, plus I have 1, 1. And I can put this into my calculator. So again, take out your calculator. I can take 11 times 60 and then raise to, so use the caret button, raise to the 3, plus 3 times, I'll take 60 raised to the 2, plus 10 times 60, and then of course, plus 1 times 1, I can just write 1 if you want, but I'll put it all in there, 1 times 1. And I get back a huge number, uh, 2 million, oops, 2,387,401. So 387,401. So that's a lot of things that we've represented with just a few symbols. So to understand why they m might want to use this numeral system, you also have to realize that a lot of their sort of religious activities was based uh, upon astronomy. And so they had to have the ability uh, to record uh, very large uh, numbers. So that may be another reason why they used or picked, chose such a, uh, a numeral system. Okay, so the last thing we want to do, we went one way, meaning if I give you uh, the numeral, st uh, the number in the Egyptian numeral system, you can write it in our numeral system, or the Roman, or the Greek, or the Babylonian. Now you can write it in our numeral system. Now we want to go the other way, where I give you uh, the number in our numeral system, and you write it in the given uh, numeral system. And some of these are real easy. You'll see here like the Egyptian numeral system is pretty easy, along with the Greek and the Roman. There's, you're not going to really struggle too much with these three. But the Babylonian, you're going to have to think a bit. It's going to take a little bit of work on your part to figure that one out. So let's take a look first at the Egyptian uh, numeral system. And the idea is I want to write 1,234. I think I just chose 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, so 1,234 in the Egyptian uh, numeral system. And over here, I gave you the table, which again, you'll always be given this uh, exact uh, table here. And you realize, okay, well, uh, 1,000 can be written as a lotus flower. So I'll draw the best of my ability. It doesn't have to be perfect. A lotus flower, so that's 1,000. And then I have 200 things here. So I'm going to draw uh, two scrolls. That's 200 things. So there's my two scrolls. And then I have three, which represents 30 things. So I have three heel bones. And then I have four vertical staffs. That's it. That represents 1,234 things. So like I said, the Egyptian numeral system, no problem. The Greek numeral system, it's a little bit harder, but you'll get this one down too. 
So this is equal to, and we can start from the left or right, it doesn't matter. Let's start from the right this time. So I want to represent four things. So I look at my table. So here's my table on the right, and you find four things, and that's the symbol delta. So I'll draw a delta the best I can. And then I have 30 things, and so I come over here and say, oh, here's 30 things. That's the symbol lambda, so I draw a lambda next to it. So here's my lambda. And then I have 200 things, so there's that 2. So over here I have 200, and that's a sigma. And then finally I have this 1,000, which remember what happens is you sort of reset, and so I have an alpha. And if you remember the comma, great. If not, I don't care. Right? They would draw a comma, uh, write a comma right there. You could also write a comma right here. That doesn't really bother me. I just want you guys to understand the idea that they used their alphabet and how to use this table to sort of figure out how they would express this number, 1,234. All right. Let's take a look at the next one. So we did the Egyptian. We did the Greek. Now we have the Roman numeral system. Now this one's piece of cake. You guys will catch on real fast. So this one, 1,234, is equal to when you come over here and you say, oh, let's do 1,000. So that's M. So M is 1,000. And then you have 200. Well, I could just do two CCs, right? So CC. And then 30, I could do uh, what? Uh, three of these. So three X's. X, X, X. And then four, I can write either four ones or I could be a little bit fancy and say, oh, that's an I and a V. That's four things. So that should be 1,234. And finally, we get to the only one that's going to cause you some real trouble. So let's talk about this one. How do you express 1,234 in the Babylonian numeral system? And the reason why this is going to give you trouble is that before you can actually write down uh, this number in the Babylonian numeral system, you need to first convey, convert it to base 60. So you have to ask yourself the question, uh, how do you write this in terms of 60s? Right now it's written in terms of base 10s. And it's really easy actually if you think about it in the right way. I always like to think about this in terms of cups. So you have a 1s cup, a 60s cup, and then you have a 60s squared cup. But the 60s squared cup is going to represent 3,600 3, things because that's what 60s squared is. So it turns out, if you ask yourself the question, do I need this cup? because we're not basically put things in this cup to represent this number, you'll say no because 3,600 is way too big. Right? You only need, 1, 000, need to represent 1,234 things. So I ask yourself the question, and I usually do this with markers in the class. So on here I'll say, you know, how many markers should I put in this cup to represent 1,234 things? Well, if you put one marker in here, it's just 60 things. If you put two, it's two 60s. So the question becomes, how many times does 60 go into 1,234? And you have a calculator. And so you want to use uh, this calculator. So let me pull it out. So we want to use this calculator here and figure out how many times does 60 go into 1,234. So we'll divide this by 60. And you'll see it goes into it nicely 20 times. So we're going to put 20 markers right, or 20 things, whatever you want to think, in this cup. And if you put 20 things in this cup, what you have now is 20 60s, which means you've represented 20 times 60, which is 1,200 things. Now, how many things do you have left to represent? Well, your goal is to represent 1,234. You just represented 1,200. So hopefully you say, I have 34 things left. And those 34 things go into the last cup. Once you do this, then you got it. So all you have to figure out is how do you write 20 in the Babylonian numeral system, and you come down here and you say, oh, here's 20 in the Babylonian numeral system. And so you write two triangular wedges, a nice big space, and then write 34. So here's 34 in the Babylonian numeral system, so a nice big space. So it's real clear. So here's 34. And we'll practice this uh, some more on the homework and on the review. And I'll even do uh, probably a, uh, another problem uh, on the next lecture to try to help you get uh, uh, started or to help you on the uh, uh, homework and the uh, review. But this is the only one that's going to cause you a lot of, a lot of trouble. Right? So you might want to review this one and even do a, another example uh, on the side. In fact, why don't we do, why don't we do just one more? 
right, together just just so you can see that it's, it's not terrible so let's let's do something like um, well let's see let's do uh, 582 all right, so how do you represent represent 582 in the Babylonian numeral system and so again you do these cups and so you have a ones cup and you have a 60s cup and you don't need the 60 square cup because it's way too big and then you ask yourself this question how many markers are you gonna put uh, in this cup and you can say well if you put 10 markers that's gonna be 600 things so that's way too big so I bet you it's nine markers so if I put nine markers in there I have 9 times 60 things, and you can use your calculator to figure this out. So you have 9 times 60, which is uh, 540 things. And so how many things do you have left to represent? Well, if you have 540 things here, you have 42 things left. So you need to put 42 markers in that cup. And so this is equal to, go find 9 things in the Babylonian numeral system. So it looks like this. Just copy down the symbols. This one's not painful because there's so many symbols to write down, but there we go. And then find 42. So here's 42. So a nice big space. Triangular wedge, triangular wedge, triangular wedge, triangular wedge, and two. So that's 582 things in the Babylonian numeral system.